are you today? Well, I know you and noticed that you were very excited to make your Colorado elk hunt. So this morning, what we're going to be going over is uh, clothing. First thing you need to do and have prepared for you is the proper amount of clothing, especially to come to Colorado. Um, one of the things that I've learned that you you could get three foot of snow at any time. You know, we're going to be preparing to go on a, a third season elk hunt, which is uh, late November. So snow is definitely uh, in the forecast and it's going to be cold. So we got to think about what we're going to wear. And, and I tell you the truth. Anything cotton, throw away. You don't want to bring nothing cotton. Anything cotton is going to end up freezing you. What happens is you're going to begin to sweat. You're going to do a lot of walking, and you're going to, even if it's 30 degrees out, in the walking and, and tracking down these animals, you're going to sweat. And when you sweat, the cotton soaks it up, and then later... After you're done walking, you're going to get cold. So now you walk in, you walk in a quarter mile to your hunting spot, and you sit down. And, and I'm going to sit down there for two, three hours. Well, when, if you're not moving, you're not doing anything, you're going to get cold. First thing that's going to get cold is your feet, your toes, and then your fingers. If your toes and your fingers are getting cold, that means you have cotton on. And because the cotton is wet from your sweat, it begins to freeze you. It works. That's we sweat to cool down our body. It begins to work. So first thing you want to do is make sure you have no cotton on your body. And with that, you know, I just wear one of these basic shirts and you don't need much. I know this thing is pretty thin, but the way it's designed, it does keep you warm. Yet wicks the sweat away. It pulls the sweat off your body and it pulls it to the outer layers of, of the materials of here and then it dries quickly and you won't get cold and just this shirt alone will uh, prevent your toes from freezing now many people believe that you go out and buy wool socks right and, and I'll tell you the truth wool socks will not work unless you have a, a sock underneath the wool sock similar to the same material so Men, go out and buy yourself a, a nice pair of polyon or polyurethane socks, you know, dress socks. Not pantyhose, but much thicker and a nice dress sock. Put that on, then your wool sock, and you'll be fine. And in fact, if you put that on and then cotton socks, you'll be fine. You just can't have the cotton touching your body. And then with that, you know, for Colorado, we got... Uh, this, it depends on where you're going, but if you're in the woods, this here is number one perfect camel. Uh, I've had deer, elk, all those things just walk right up to you, and uh, they can't even tell what you are. They're not sure. They can see that there's something there, but they don't know what it is. And out of that curiosity, they'll just walk right up to you. I've uh, been in many places where people were walked right past me feet away and, and again the people couldn't even see me and this so this is perfect in, in the deep pine woods but I want to remind you a third season rifle you got to wear orange so all this camo stuff is, is crazy and you don't want to go spending a bunch of money so in a later season probably wear a little more goldish brownish color and, and again these work fine they're they're you don't need something special. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money on that because you can't wear camo in Colorado in rifle season. You, you have to have a certain amount of orange on. So what the elk end up seeing is just this great big patch of orange. And it's not orange, but they see black and white, they say. But I, I think elk can see color <laughs> just like us. I don't know. But, but there's this big giant block of orange that, that doesn't belong in their wilderness or, or their place. It's just so out of place. They take notice of it right away. So in that, you know, you got to have a good, safe place to go. Now, because snow comes in and at any time, you know, I've been up in the high country and we've had four foot of snow there. I mean, it was amazing because we're driving in a pickup truck. Uh, a Ford F-250 and right at door level, right out the window of the door is the the level of the snow. And uh, in the mountains there, they may 
send a, a plow truck or not even a plow truck, but a, but a loader, front end loader, and scoop a little path. But but it's usually only about the the width of your truck, and so in that you got to be prepared. You know you want to dress in layers, and so you know you always want to have yourself a, a pair of uh, down field sleeping gear. So down field long johns. You know, yeah, we talk about, you know, the uh, wool and all that, but, but these here, you, you don't get cold. And in fact, if you do it right and, and you have your, you know, polyurethane long johns on, don't wear cotton, but wear them and a pair of these, and, and you're perfectly insulated. You, you don't get over pretty much 90 degrees. You, you'll stay uh, that temperature all the time, you know, your your body temperature will be perfect. You won't get too hot, and you won't get cold. You, you'll feel like it's a 70 degree day. If you got these proper gear, and you got to get through the night. The worst part about elk hunting, third season, is waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning at 30 below zero, you know, 10 below zero. So if you're, the warmer you are and the better you are, prepared for your sleeping and then when you wake up it's much easier. I've always found that putting my clothes I'm going to wear the next day in my sleeping bag so that when I wake up and get dressed it's already warm and I'm not putting nice cold clothes on things like that you know. Uh, what I always wear and I always have suspenders and especially when you're elk hunting you're going to walk many miles you're, you're going to end up walking a lot and I don't care who you are, you're going to get a sweaty crack, man. And having a sweaty crack sucks. And when your crack is sweating, your pants are sticky. Now they're sticking to your sweat crack and your pants are falling down and you're always trying to pull your pants up because your crack's all sweaty. And there you got a raw ass and everything's just like going to making your trip bad. So one of the things that I found to help is pulling those pants up and keeping from a sweaty crack it's having good suspenders and that will carry the weight of your clothing as well on your shoulders. Uh, all wool pants, get a nice green, anything green will work. You don't want to get too much brown because uh, this here, these are insulated Carhartt pants. Wonderful. But notice this looks exactly the same color as the body of an elk. And to have full... Uh, uh, Carhartt uh, bib overalls or something like that's usually not a good idea because there's a lot of hunters out there that shoot movement. I saw something move in the trees and I shot the movement and what they see move is uh, just a, a flash of a color of, of elk and, and it's that which uh, they'll shoot at. So, so try not to wear too much Carhartt. You want to have good green. They can't see that green. You blend in real nice. And a little bit of camo is, is fine. Uh, wool pants are, are awesome because, you know, they do insulate when they're wet. Wool will insulate you. So you got your good, uh, you know, long johns and then you got your wool pants. Say I'm out trucking around in the snow and snow's, you know, now getting up and, and starts soaking into my pant leg. That's a problem, you know, you've got your cotton pants on and, and the water soaks into there, you're, you're going to get cold and you're going to get wet. These, you're going to get wet, but you're not going to get cold. Wool will insulate you while it's wet. You'll stay warm. I, I have done it before. In fact, we were up on a trip and uh, snow is four foot deep, and you're like, why do you go elk hunting where there's four foot snow? And exactly, exactly. One of the ways you, you prevent yourself from having a bad trip is having a, a little bit of discernment to understand elk and no animals live in four foot of snow. They live in an area where they can eat the grass and all that. So when you come to Colorado, maybe way up on the high peaks, there's a lot of snow. But down in the valleys, there's not so much snow. Well, the elk you're going to find in the late season are going to be right on that edge. <clears throat> right where the snow is a few inches. There is maybe snow on the ground, but not too much. They also don't like walking over frozen snow because it's very noisy. And the elk know that. So they're going to be right below the snow, wherever that snow level is. 
Yeah, I remember we were there and we were hunting and, and <coughs> we ended up <coughs> getting stuck in, in our truck and uh, thank God, you know, I had a shovel and an uh, axe and things like that and we were able to get ourselves unstuck. But in that, I had to crawl up underneath the truck inside of mud and, and water, and, and I had uh, a wool sweatshirt with this wool vest and uh, my shirt, and that's all I needed and with my wool pants. That was it. Just those three simple layers of a vest, a sweater, this, and, and my wool pants rolling around for hours in, in the mud and water trying to get the truck unstuck, and uh, I was warm. It was soaking wet, like I jumped in, in a pool, swimming pool, but, but I was warm. And, and while the snow, mind you, is four foot thick all around us, so it's freezing cold. But, but I was never cold. My toes were never cold. My fingers were never cold. And, and so this is how we keep our fingers and our toes warm. The warmer our core body is, the, the warmer our outer limbs are. So it's important to, if you're going to come third season elk hunting in Colorado, wool. Make sure you got wool and no cotton to touch your body. You can wear some cotton, but don't allow it to touch your body. And, and rule number three is make sure you go buy yourself an awesome belt, man, with a great big belt buckle, you know, so everybody knows you're out enjoying yourself. So, so have a good belt for... for and remember, you need that belt to carry your knife and, and other gear. And, and so that's what we'll be going over the next time. And, and I'll show you that we need, uh, you got to have an orange vest. And in Colorado, you also have to have an orange hat. And so when you come here, make sure you buy those things before you get here. Because if you buy them here on site in the mountains, they know you forgot. They know you're from out of town. And so they got a special price waiting for you. And I just would like you to enjoy your trip. And there's nothing worse than having to buy a $10 hat for $40 because I forgot to, to get these things on my own. And so, and, and also, don't go crazy on the camouflage. Everybody wants you to buy camo and camo. Cam you, camo don't work here, guys. <laughs> You, bow hunting, you can wear camouflage, and, and outside of bow hunting, you must have orange. And so, keep that in, in mind when you're coming. That'll save you a little extra money for a, a nice beer. And don't forget to stop off at the Bud Store when you come to Denver, because we smoke weed, drink beer, and kill animals all day long. And, and that's what's going to provide you a good time here with us in, in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, right? Right? We don't come here for, uh, you know, fun and games. We come here for the Rocky Mountain High. And a part of that is uh, hunting with Dave. See you next time.